So they had the location, the last location of Natural Bridge, the last of three. But yeah. What's there today? It's a post office. Oh. The Harmony Post Office. Probably not. So when did you open on South Grand? Well, Dad, uh, uh, he had done work with uh, a man who owned a lot of South St. Louis property. And uh, so he had this vacant lot at Grand and Merrimack, just just south of uh, Merrimack Kingsland, Street. Kingsland, I think. Yeah, Grand and Kingsland Court. Uh, actually, that guy's name was Koenig, which Ed is... Ed Koenig? Yeah, Ed Koenig. Yeah. Uh, and King Koenig is the word for king right. in German. Yeah. And so uh, he called it Kingsland Court. Um, he owned extensive real estate. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, he was not really uh, well known for being uh, generous. Oh. <laughs> but uh, my dad and he got along fine. And uh, Dad rented that property until one day when Ed was quite old. He was maybe close to 80 years old, and he uh, sold it to Dad for really not too much money. Uh, I can't remember what the selling price was. Uh, but uh, that store really has endured for a long sure time. Has. But the neighborhood has gotten poor and we're having a hard time selling Christmas trees now, but the frozen custard business it's is still doing good. quite well. Good. So you opened there, when was it? 1931. 31. So at that time you had two stores, one in Pine Lawn mm -hmm. and the other on South Grand. I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, does anyone have a cell phone on by any chance? Yep. Could I just ask you to turn it off? Getting a little bit of a buzz from it. Mm. I got a cell phone. But it, yeah, it's, for some reason, sometimes cell phones, those little signals will pick up. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. It, it, it just started. So yeah, I, I turned. Okay. Well, anyway, oh, shall so we go on? It. So good. Hmm. Well, I turn it off. It's on silent, but. We'll put it over here. Yeah, maybe just move it away from the microphone. That'll probably do it. Say, now, say when. What about, okay, that was 31 yeah. on South Grand. Was there a frozen custard stand there before? No, but later on he uh, bought land on Chippewa Street, but it wasn't called Chippewa then, it was called Watson Road. Mm -hmm. They changed the name later. Watson starts at the say limits. Right. But Chippewa used to end... Well, it's a long story. Watson Road sw swings around. Yeah, it does. It uh, but he had a chance to, uh, I don't know how he ever bought that land, but gee whiz, he bought 175 feet, which just for a little dinky frozen custard stand. But one thing about my father, he understood modern habits, and he understood just how important the automobile was. And so instead of having a corner store where he just catered to the neighborhood only, mm -hmm. he wanted to draw the automobile trade in. Very smart. And every week, uh, people flocked to the Merrimack River at that time. Oh, sure. Um, there was no air conditioning. Yeah. Now, today's young people don't understand what it, a different life it was then. But in the summer, they would just swelter, and everybody, they'd flock to Forest Park and just sleep there during a heat wave, just sleep on the ground yep. with a mat or whatever they had. And he understood uh, how important it was to be on the main drag coming back in from the country. And on Sunday night, oh my goodness sakes, that Chippewa store, they were swamped uh, with business. And a lot of people 
think that we've only made money in the uh, modern era, but at that time, our weekend business, boy, oh boy, on s Sunday night, the rush would start and it wouldn't end. <laughs> That's right. And uh, uh, I guess my dad was an innovator of sorts. He understood people's habits and and he had a chance to buy that land and boy, he paid a dear price. It was $100 a foot. That was 17500 oh, Well, at that time, yeah. homes were going for like 4000 mm -hmm. So that was a lot of money. And... Uh, you were right there in 66, Route 66. Well, that's just it. My mother, I, I came in, and I always did like to play like most boys. Mm -hmm. And I came in one day, and gee, it was 1941. And uh, so I was 13 years old at the time. And I came in dirty and grimy uh, from playing. And, I, and she said, guess what, Teddy? We're going to have a new frozen custard stand. Oh, on Route 66. Uh, and I I said, Route 66? Is it going to be in the country? Oh, no, it's right at the city limits. The country starts just a couple blocks away, but we figured that we'll get all that weekend trade coming in. It'll be the first place they hit when they come back into town. And oh and i was entranced and and i was really excited over that and the next year we took a trip out west uh that night i guess oh we had already taken that trip in 1939 we went west and we drove out we came home from grand canyon on route 66, on 66. and there were that was there was that was a great time. And so I had already traveled on Route 66. Funny thing, I had forgotten that. But no wonder I was so excited because I had already driven sure. on Route 66. And so I guess we were sort of privileged. At that time, not too many people could afford to travel. Yeah, and uh, 66 at that point was just about 15 years old. <coughs> and now it's... Still historic Route 66. People still call it. We have had more fun with Route 66. Oh, I'll bet. And, and I, <clears throat> the fellow named Michael Wallace wrote a book called uh, The Mother Road, Route 66, The Mother Road, I think was the name of it. And uh, he interviewed me one day. Uh, he called from Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is right on Route right 66. There, yeah. And... Uh, he called me up and, gee, he must have talked long distance with me for an hour. And I I said, isn't this costing you a lot of money? At that time, you didn't have cell phones. Right, right. It, it, he said, that's all right, Ted. I'm writing I'm right this story. So he uh, really bragged up Ted Drews in that book. He said, Ted Drews is like mother's milk. <laughs> and I thought that was cute. What was uh, on the property before there on, on Chippewa? You know, I understand that there was a frozen custard stand there. Oh. But that's just hand-me-down sure. stories that people have told me. 